Here's our full conversation with Ryan Reynolds. In Free Guy, Reynolds plays a bank teller who realizes he's a background character in a video game that's about to go offline. The actor hopped online to chat about it with our Brian Truitt. I saw you and Blake attend the premiere the other night. What was that like returning to that little bit of normalcy after a while? Oh, you know, it was, it was not, look, I, I, there, there's, there's, let me just say right at the outset, there's nothing normal about ever walking a, a red carpet for anything. Um, so uh, in the best of times, in the worst of times, it's just a festival of anxiety, but um, we fake it well. You know, I'm, it's, uh, uh, but it was, there was, you know, uh, something nice about coming together. And I, the best part for me is seeing all the, all the faces and the people that, you know, helped make this movie so special and, mm. um, and such an unforgettable experience, not only shoot, but to watch. Um, so being around those guys, I, we were bummed that Jodie Comer couldn't get out of, uh, her shooting duties in London. And we were missing Utkarsh Ambudkar, who, who's, uh, also a huge part of our movie, but, um, um, it was, it was pretty awesome night. Yeah. Free Guy tackles a lot of themes, you know, free will, being your best self. Which one maybe resonates more with you now after the past year than perhaps it did making it? Um, I feel like it, it is all it's 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 pretty damn close to when we were making it. You know, it felt like when we when I was initially given the script and I then sent it to Sean, I was I, I sent it to him because I just felt like the movie really spoke to everything that was going on. We were in this kind of um, constant and, and, and I think, you know, ink black doom and gloom news cycle that, you know, just felt so kind of unrelenting and, 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 and also important, you know, at, at the time and, and, and still is, you know, very similar as well and, and incredibly important. And it just felt like a, a really wonderful opportunity to kind of escape that for a minute and sort of do the, or pres be the prescription that movies were for me as a kid, which were like, you know, I'd go and I would see back to the future or something like that. And I would feel like real wish fulfillment. And I would feel like I was really taken someplace else for on a journey for, for an hour and a half or two hours. And um, that was something we really was really important to us that. And then also the idea that it was, you know, an increasingly rare and hard thing to do is pull off an original idea these days and, and to be given a, a decent enough budget to make a, a blockbuster style movie that that is not based on a previous previously existing IP or, or comic book or sequel. Um, so, you know, that for us was a huge, huge challenge, uh, pandemic or no pandemic, that that's always a huge challenge. And um, it was something that Sean and I were both really super excited about. You know, you are all by, by all accounts, a very successful dude. But do even you sometimes need something uplifting and empowering like this to remind yourself of what's important? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, every person out there has their own little bag of rocks that they're carrying around. And, you know, everyone has this for a lot of people. It's they're very different sizes. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I find myself also kind of, you know, feeling uh you know, the weight of, uh, of everything that's going on in, in, in current culture, past culture, and hopefully, you know, at some point future culture. So I, I, yeah, you know, I think we all, we all sort of feel that, you know, to a certain degree. This movie has an awesome whiz bang kind of video game feel with cool effects. You know, it's always, always surrounding you, even when you're walking down the street, did free guy end up having more green screen than green lantern? No, actually we, free guy is incredibly practical. So much of what we were doing was practical. Obviously, the in, you know, the the heads up display that we see when I put the glasses on, obviously, those are um, computer generated imagery. But but uh, those, it's also computer gener computer generated imagery superimposed onto practical buildings. And you know, um, we did a bit of skinning of uh, of um, the Boston skyline um, at times, but so much of it was 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 practical. There really wasn't um, as much as much you know visual effects as you might think. Yeah, assuming they've seen the movie or at least your Instagram, do your wife and daughters prefer you as guy or you as dude? <laughs> no, I think my, what they prefer me is, as I, well, I would hope uh, as guy. Uh, dude is, a, is an impossible uh, 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 reality. So there's no, there's no hope that I will ever be dude. Um, but I did love that part of the film. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. getting to fight my own either depending on how you look at it best or worst self is, is pretty, pretty fun for me. So. 
in inhabiting a guy like guy who is, who is, he's very cheery. He's trying to find, be his best self. Do you feel empowered, you know, playing that sort of character, like on a daily basis when you're playing this? I mean, do you feel kind of transformed when you're playing someone like that? Yeah, I think I bring a lot of myself to that. You know, I think I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm closer to Guy in real life than I would be Deadpool or something like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm farther away from the spectrum of an anti-hero who sees the world, you know, through the prism of cynicism than I, I'm much closer to somebody who tries to see things in an optimistic light. And I don't know, I, I, I like playing a character that sees things, uh, you know, through the prism of, of innocence and, and optimism, you know, I think there's, I think we're moving in a little bit more in that direction anyway, you know, and, and for, for our protagonists, uh, these days, particularly if you look at like shows like Ted Lasso and stuff like, I mean, it's, it's, we're, we're, we, there isn't, a, we're not embracing that kind of cynical, uh, uh, protagonist the way we kind of used to, I think, um, and I don't, actually, weirdly, Deadpool also is not, I wouldn't say is like a really cynical kind of character. He's also kind, quite childlike. He's just, you know, he just leans closer to the, you know, the filthy end of that spectrum than he does that guy would, you know. Sorry I'm late. I was rounding up all the gluten in the world and launching into space where it can't not hurt us ever again. The movies industry is obviously still figuring itself out in terms of, you know, streaming and theatrical releases. And it does seem to be kind of in an evolutionary period. For you as an actor and as a filmmaker, how do you think things need to stay the same and or evolve? I don't know. I, I, you know, maybe it's an overly kind of rosy way of looking at it, but I think there's room for all of it. You know, I think as long as we're telling stories, that's the most important thing. And, you know, telling new stories and, and it particularly, um, you know, the forum with which we imbibe those stories is uh, certainly uh, that's personal choice. And I think that that's great that people have that choice. I did want to talk about some things that I won't write about until after, after the movie's out, but you know, how bittersweet for you is that Alex Trebek cameo? Yeah. Well, I've been, I've been on the show a few times and I, I don't, I don't, wouldn't necessarily say I'm a friend of the show, but I'm a, I'm friendly to the show. Every time they've asked me to do something for Jeopardy in the past, I've said, yes, of course. And, and, um, and then the weirdly in this moment, I, it was me asking Alex if for a favor uh, and, you know, he's as gentlemanly and, integrity field and as stalwart as you would imagine him to be in real life. And um, he said, yes, right away. They were already shooting the show. And, and uh, so we came in and, and uh, grabbed our, our little cameo. And, and I was super grateful for him for, for taking the time to do that. I mean, even right up till shortly before he passed, he was still, you know, he called me about a, a, a charity function that he was doing. I mean, the, the man was quite beautiful as human beings go. That's for sure. You guys have a number of fun voice cameos, including your old friend, Hugh Jackman. You know, when you pitch him on this role, do you tell him that he quickly gets shot in the chest? No, oh, I, 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 you know, I mean, I, I like cameos is like part of the sort of uh, showbiz ecosystem. You know, I feel like when somebody asks you to do a cameo, unless you're geographically unavailable, I'm pretty much always going to say yes. Or unless it's a, the, the role is something that's, you know, completely offensive, I probably won't do it. But but, um, you know, I, I, I've been lucky to be asked to do cameos in the past and I've always had fun doing them. And, um, you know, Hugh has been a friend of mine for a long, long time. And, you know, I was I, I was thrilled that he said yes to it. But I, I don't think he cared one way or the other, whether he was shot or, or lived to die another day. So you guys have a cool relationship. I mean, I think that's kind of something we always love to see is it's like because whenever somebody puts on Instagram, somebody else is going to put, put a reply. I mean, it's, it's kind of a neat back and forth. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely love Hugh for all of our, you know, silly rivalries and that sort of stuff. He's he's one of my closest friends. I'm really lucky to be able to, to call him that. Since everyone's in the Disney family at this point, did you actually get one of the legit Captain America movie shields to use? No, not at all. <laughs> no, I, 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 uh, we didn't even know that they would say yes uh, until after, well, we 100% yes until after we shot it, so. Okay. Yeah. So we were leaving room to make that shield something else if we had to. Uh, okay. What, what, what would have been if it wasn't a shield? Could have just been a gladiator shield. Could have oh, okay. Been anything. Yeah. So the Chris Evans part happened, happened later on, or was that? No, oh, that was time? in the moment as well. That was in the, he was in Boston shooting uh, already and um, he's a friend and I text him and he was incredibly kind and gracious to say yes I set up the scene for him and I told him exactly what was kind of 
happening. And, and, uh, we were, we were 100% ready for him, you know, before he ever even got close to set. Uh, so I think he was in and out in about seven minutes. And how cool was it for you to do a lightsaber sequence? And did you ask for the star Wars scene to be played while you were filming? I, well, yeah, we always knew that we couldn't, you couldn't use that without those two are so synonymous. I mean, you kind of need the music to go with the lights. It's such a moment in the movie um, mm-hmm. and seeing it with an audience, you know, and they jump to their feet in that moment. It's pretty, a pretty special feeling to, 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 to be in a theater seeing that happen. So um, yeah, that was, uh, that was, you know, part and parcel with it all again, like Disney purchased or acquired Fox 20th century studios, you know, right in our sort of pre-production phase and you know for all of our you know concerns and worries they they ended up being the most supportive partner you could ever imagine they were they were pretty gung-ho about making an original uh blockbuster film in the summertime i was a little shocked to not see deadpool though there's an easter egg in in there for him how's that third movie coming along at this point not too much i could say about it right now um it's coming along though super Mm -hmm. exciting yeah i saw you filming with you know you put up a, a a thing with will ferrell that you're filming uh, Spirited. Uh, what's that What's that like, just to perform with him and just, you know, to do a musical yeah. with him? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a, a, you know, really unfamiliar territory for me to shoot a musical with, you know, genuine singing and dancing. Pasek and Paul are doing the music who they did uh, Greatest Showman and La La Land and Dear Evan Hansen. So the music is incredible. And then working with Will is, you know, he's one of my comedy idols. He always has been and. Uh, to spend time with him like that has been amazing. They say never meet your heroes, but he's he he is just he lives up to every every preconceived notion I would have about him in terms of being just an excellent human being on and off camera. And uh, I've loved every second working with him. Guy is obsessed with the, you know vintage Mariah Carey. What's Ryan obsessed with when he's when he's running around the house and he you know he starts belting a song or an old diva? Who who's he doing? Oh man, I don't know. I'm lately. I've been a little obsessed with Gordon Lightfoot. <laughs> um, I don't know. I saw some special on him in Toronto. Uh, I, I yeah, just kind of got sent me down memory lane a little bit. So uh, I'm obsessed with um, uh, a relatively new singer to the scene called Jake Wesley Rogers. Uh, so is Blake. She's obsessed with him as well as are my kids. Uh, he's just like really beautiful singer songwriter who, you know, belts out some sort of instant, uh, instantly, uh, instant toe tappers. So. Do your daughters have a favorite Ryan Reynolds movie yet? Each of them? Um, I know detective Pikachu is up there. Uh, you know, again, my kids are six and under, so they certainly haven't seen their, any of the rated R stuff, but uh, yeah, Detective Pikachu, um, Free Guy's big because they've seen it, a couple of rough cuts of it, and now they just saw the the final version. So they love that. Every time I step outside the door, they say, "Don't have a good day, have a great day." Uh, so I mean, it's landing for them in some way, shape, or form. That's for sure. You got you got Red Notice coming up with um, Gall and and um, your your friend Dwayne. Um, what's that going to be like? Does that is that going to be as kind of big as it? feels and seems like with you three. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's exactly what it, it's as advertised. It's a, just a huge kind of uh, spectacle driven action comedy that, you know, um, I think delivers on, on, on all of its promises. And Adam project, have, have you finished that with Sean? Or are you still working on that? Oh, we're still in the edit room on it, but yeah, it's almost, it's almost very close to being finished. Yeah. Anything else? You have so much kind of going on. Are you also, you're also doing the clue movie, right? Are you still are you doing that? No, that's that I, I, that is on hold. I, I, you know, I think that's, that's was Disney purchased or acquired Fox. That was uh, something that didn't, you know, I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that one. Yet. Being that you, you know, you mentioned you have kids under six, you know, going back to work, you know, during the pandemic and during COVID and everything, was that, did that worry you? Was that, some, was that a concern or, you know, kind of, you know, weighing going back to work versus, you know, you know, the kids yeah. and keeping them healthy. And I mean, if, I'd be an idiot if it didn't concern me. I mean, it's, you know, you have to trust in the process and you walk through all the, the protocols. I mean, um, you know, red notice was, you know, full sequestered uh, mm-hmm. set. So meaning every single crew member lives in a, in a uh, hotel. Uh, there's no stopping on the way to work. You get your, if you need gas for your car, you get it at work. Uh, they'll fill mm-hmm. it up for you. I mean, it was, 
you know, intense and, and it was really requisite to the moment. I think it, it was exactly what the only way you could finish that movie. And at that time was, was to sort of lock it down that way. So I, I took some solace in that. And then, you know, same thing for Adam project. We were, you know, very, very careful. Uh, you know, you're, you, all the protocol is put in place that, you know, testing every single day, you know, bubbles, that kind of stuff. So um, I didn't feel super concerned about, you know, my kids, but they were, you know, they were home with us as well. So how ready were you get to, in, to get back to work? Well, yeah, I mean, I, it's more of a itch you you really need to scratch, which is that, you know, I, I had stopped shooting red notice halfway through it, almost exactly mm-hmm. halfway through it. So you, you want to, you know, you want to finish this thing you started. <laughs> Um, right. so it, was, it was less about less about feeling, oh, God, I'm trapped in the house with my family. Dear God, mm-hmm. please get me out of here. I, I you know, um, I, I never had that thought cross my mind. I never take for granted spending time with my family. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to finish the movie for sure. Fantastic. Sir. Thank you so much for taking time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out these other videos from USA Today Entertainment to stay up to date on all of the latest celebrity news.